Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to Divine Truth Christian Center, where God wants your dreams and your visions realized. We ask if you'll stand to your feet at this time as we open up in a word of prayer, giving honor to whom honor is due. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just come before you this morning to give you glory and to give you honor and to give you praise. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in your presence, God, once again. Father, we thank you for your glory that saturates this place. We thank you for your anointing that fills us, Father. We just thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love, and for your grace, Lord. We just thank you for the peace of God. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, everything that you're going to do, Father. Father, we just thank you for everyone that is here today oh God we thank you for those that are watching via um, live stream Lord we just ask that you will move in a mighty way God let your Holy Spirit take complete control in this house you are welcome in this house you are welcome to have your way in this house you are welcome to dwell among us in this house in the name of Jesus and Father, we pray that as anyone that walks in through this door, Father, we pray that as they walk in, that their lives will be changed forever, God. That there will be a true transformation in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that you bless the angel of this house, God. As you give him the words to speak, use him as your vessel this morning, oh God. Give him the wisdom, God, to speak the words that you would give to him, God. In the name of Jesus. And we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in the house of the Lord, giving God all the glory, telling him how much we love him, how much we adore him, how much we appreciate him. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, God. And before we even begin, we lift our hands to you, oh God, in worship, worship to you. We are here to do what we were created to do, oh God, and that is to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. And we give you the glory, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Our hearts cry. Oh, God. 
Jesus. How we bless your name. How we glorify your name. And we're going to love you forever. Our love for you never fails. Our love for you never stops. Hallelujah, Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. I said nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. And that's why we're going to love him forever and ever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness towards me. Your love is so amazing. It brings me to my knees. Oh, gonna love you forever.
greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer He's awesome in power Our God Our God Come on and say He's strong He's high Talking about our God He's awesome Let's say that again Our God He's strong He's high Higher than any Our God He's awesome We're talking about our God Cause water you turn Water you turn into wine He opened the eyes of the blind Yes There's no one like him There is none like our great Jehovah
Lord. Hallelujah. No one can compare. Hallelujah, Jesus. No one can compare. Jesus. There's no one that can compare to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Yes, our God. Can you say that again, our God? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. So we lift our hands yes, to our God. We lift our eyes to our God. Thank you, Jesus. We lift our voice to our God. Because great and mighty is our God. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. There is no one that can compare. A great God. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship Him in this place this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Great and mighty is our God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Great and mighty is our 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 God. Come on and say. Oh! 
is our Savior. Great and mighty is our Savior.
for being Jehovah Jireh. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for being our protector. For we can hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for everything that you are to us. For you are more to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Hallelujah, God. He is a great God. He is a mighty God. He is a powerful God. He is an awesome God. Hallelujah. We say yes to you, oh God. Yes. Mighty is our God. Mighty. Mighty is God. We say yes to your will, oh God. We say yes to your way, oh God. We say yes, we will go, oh God. We say yes, we will obey, oh God. Because we know we serve a mighty God. Come on and say that again. Yes. your holy name we pray that our worship was acceptable in your sight oh God for we live to give you glory God we exist to give you glory God hallelujah God and we pray that it was a sweet smell in your nostrils oh God and that it was a sweet sound in your ear oh God let our worship be for real oh God so that we may please you we may glorify you we may honor you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated at this time for our announcements. Welcome to Vision Flow Studios. I'm Lady Martin, and I'm here to give you the latest news from Divine Truth Christian Center, right here in the beautiful city of Windsor Park, Florida. We would like to welcome everyone that is joining us today, and especially our newcomers. We are so excited to worship with you. You should have received the connection card from our greeter, so please complete the contact information and place it in the basket during our time of giving so we can keep you updated on all the exciting events here at DTCC. Now let's give our newcomers a hand. My time with God. Do you want to get closer to God but are not sure how? Are you looking for answers to life's issues? Maybe you're seeking your purpose. You're waiting to hear from God, but at the same time, God is waiting to hear from you. He is longing to have a relationship with you and to hear your voice. So don't just rely on others to pray for you. Take the opportunity to get in God's presence every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. with like-minded believers. Many of your answers will be revealed as you build your prayer life and become intimate with our Heavenly Father. Celebration Sunday. Celebration Sunday is a time where we join with you to celebrate a birthday or special event. So if you have a celebration this month, please see Sister Amanda Penn so we can celebrate you on Celebration Sunday. And this Tuesday is another exciting session of our Ministry of Divine Arts rehearsal. Has God blessed you with the ability to sing, dance, or play an instrument? Well, this ministry is the place for you. It's time to use those gifts for God's glory. We are currently looking for sopranos, tenors, drummers, guitarists, brass instrumentalists, and percussionists that seek after the heart of God. Yes, we are building an orchestra, and if you are ready to answer the call, please join us this Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. 
News alert! Guess what? This Thursday is Soul Therapy Live, and let me tell you, Pastor is truly opening our eyes to see ourselves as God sees us. With the world in such chaos, you need to have strong faith and know what you believe and why you believe it. So join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. for Soul Therapy Live. And on September the 26th, we welcome some of Central Florida's most anointed gospel rap, neo-soul, and gospel rock artists to Club Fire Christian Nightclub. You are invited to join us from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. as we set Winter Park on fire. Did you know that giving is a form of worship? If you cannot make it to the house of God, you still have an opportunity to give online or through your mobile device. Just go to our website at www.divinetruthcc.org and click on the Give button. Sow a seed today and reap a great harvest. And don't forget, our monthly calendar is located on the table in the foyer. There's always something going on at DCCC, so pick up a calendar and get involved today. The mission of Divine Truth Christian Center is to demonstrate godly leadership through effective kingdom business strategies that promotes intimate faith, anointed worship, family unity, and financial stewardship. We seek to empower those that desire to empower themselves with a purpose-driven destiny that God has ordained, not only for this world, but the one yet to come. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at www.divinetruthcc.org where you can watch our live webcasts, view archives, connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, or read our monthly blog. Yes, people of God, we are here to serve the nation. Now visit us again soon. Back to you, Pastor Martin. Amen. <laughs> I got caught. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We worship you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you for your everlasting kindness, your love and your grace, Lord God. We worship you and we praise you. We lift you up in this place, Heavenly Father. We ask you right now, Heavenly Father, to bless those that are in the sanctuary in the midst of your people right now, Heavenly Father, as well as those that are watching online. We thank you, Lord God, for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen, amen. Thank you, singers, so much. Hallelujah. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our God. I want to do something a little bit different this morning. Amen. Something a little bit different this morning. So once again, I would like to greet everybody. We'd like to welcome you to Divine Truth Christian Center, where God wants your dreams and visions realized. Amen. I'd like to welcome all of you to the sanctuary this morning as well. Today is supposed to be, as they would say, a National Back to Church Sunday. Amen. So I'm glad and thankful for all of you that are attending into the house of the Lord this morning, as well, even those, well, even those that are still on their way, still working on our folk that are traditionally used to 11 o'clock service. <laughs> The scripture from this morning is going to come from out of 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, and you should see it on your screen, and I believe it's going to touch your heart today. One verse of scripture, and that's it, then I'll be out of your way. 1, chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, and it says this. It says, uh, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Amen. Amen. The title of today's message, Now Where is That Oil? Now Where is That Oil? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now Where is That Oil? Well, first of all, there's a lot that's been going on in the atmosphere a little bit lately, and one of the things that I wanted to do is really get down to the meat of the matter. When you look at the graphic, you're like, okay, well, what is that? Well, one of the things that I that really stood out to me when I was doing the graphics, and I kind of do all of the graphics for my messages, what stood out to me with this one is, is that you notice that the portion that is in yellow is actually the oil. 
and what surrounded is actually water, denoting that oil and water do not mix. In other words, there's some things that are anointed and there's some things that, not, that are not. What is anointed will truly stand down. Okay, okay, let me keep on going. The anointing people of God is used for a specific task to be empowered for a work that may be for a day, an hour, or even years. When you are anointed, everyone knows that it's special. When you sing, tears flow. When you minister, people delivered and set free. When you show up, the whole room is captured by your presence. It's a shift. It's a change when you're anointed. God knows it, and so does the evil one. He knows that you're anointed, and so does the devil. And, and, and watch this. There are many people with talents and gifts. Here's the punchline right here. But the anointing is that extra piece that goes beyond human comprehension or comparison. It stands out from everyone else. God is looking for those who he has anointed and appointed for such a time as this. Have a task that is too much to handle. Have a situation that, that, that you can't get over or an obstacle that is too hard to overcome. More specifically, do you have a stronghold or demonic influence in your life that needs to be identified like Jesus and, and named and cast out when Jesus uh, came to, to, to a legion himself? He said, what is your name? He didn't ask him to cast it out. He said, what is your name? In other words, you know how we go with prosperity gospel where it says you name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. Well, with Jesus, when he comes into your life, you have to name it and claim it. You have to name what's wrong with you and then you have to claim it. An old mentor of mine back when I was working as IT manager for General Dynamics, he said, Andre, you have to own your mistakes. Take ownership of them. Nobody likes to take ownership of their mistakes. So. Accountability. Well, get ready to receive the anointing. And just like a car, people of God, needs oil, I got to stop right here just for a moment. Ladies, and even some of you guys, please, 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 do not let your car run for months and months and months without no oil change. Amen. 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 <laughs> I know, understand that daddy may not be there, that the, uh, your, your husband may not be there, boyfriend may not be there, but just take it to Jiffy Lube at least a few times every 90 days, and that car won't slip a rod, and you won't have to talk about, I need to get a new one. Now, what in the world does that have to do with anything I'm saying this morning? Well, well, the truth of the matter is, just like a car needs oil so that things will go smoother and run better, you also need the anointing so that your life will run smoother and better. Amen. The oil is for whatever task, great or small, that lies ahead of you in your life. So I ask the question, where is that oil? Brother Al, where is that oil? The oil to make things smoother, even though the heat is on. The heat is on. Da -da 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 the heat is on. When, when you're inside of a car and you see all of those cylinders moving, uh, it, 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 there's one thing that actually comes a part of it. It's called viscosity breakdown. Viscosity breakdown is when the, the, the pistons are moving inside of the cylinder so much so, and because of a lack of oil, it will break down. How many of us have been broken down because we have no oil? Where is that oil? I'm preaching. I'm not going to get myself riled up just yet. It's too early. Too early. Too early. Uh, 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 watch this, people of God. The, wh wh what is the anointing for? Well, where there's many different uses. There's many different concepts. There's many different things. But, but I want to stick to Scripture and the Bible. Well, number one, the anointing oil is for order and sanctification. Amen. Order and sanctification. Exodus chapter 30 verses 25 through 33 has an idea or not even an idea, but this is God's command of how he wanted his priests and individuals in the sanctuary to be anointed. 
Verse 25 says, and you shall make from these a holy anointing oil. An ointment compounded according to the art of the perfumer. Ah, so there is a science to it. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tabernacle of the meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the table and its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all of its utensils, the laver and its base. You shall consecrate them that they may be most holy. Whatever touches them must be holy, and you shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister to me as priests. Before I, I, I go even further with verse 31, keep the scripture on the screen. Uh, when I was ordained to minister back in uh, 2011, we started in 2010, but 2011, my Bishop Vaughn McLaughlin, who actually will be in the city today, he anointed my head with oil. I went through so much, I didn't even know he was going to do it. I was bawling and crying like a baby. Something came out of me when I was anointed from my head all the way down. I let out a cry, a deep penetrating cry saying, yes, Lord, you affirm me, but also, yes, Lord, I release the pain that once held me down as well. Verse, says in verse 31, and you shall speak to the children of Israel saying, this shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. So that does not mean that it ends with, with the advent of Jesus Christ. It keeps on going and going and going. It shall not be poured on man's flesh. Ah. Nor shall you make any other like it according to its composition. It is holy and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it or whoever puts any of it on an outsider shall be cut off from his people. Now, what in the world does that mean? In other words, you can't anoint those that are not saved. A people of God, those of you that may have a ministry in the future, don't, 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 don't anoint somebody and lay hands on somebody when they just show up at your church. They have to be tested. They have to be proven. They have to be released. They, they have to be sharpened as iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. Oh, when Bishop McLaughlin was observing me, observed me for a total of one year plus, I sent him maybe like five or six or 12 or 13 or 20 text messages, and he did not reply to one of them. Now, you may say, oh, that doesn't seem like that's a lot of communication. But he wanted to see if I wanted what he had or his anointing or did I want what he had, material-wise. Ah, uh, Tess, nobody likes Tess. The anointing oil is for order and for sanctification. Before I lay hands on anybody, I, I take the anointing oil. There's anointing oil that's right there. It has perfume in it. It has mustard seeds on the inside of it as well. It's just not Crisco oil, y'all. It's not Crisco oil at all. It's olive oil. Did you know that olive oil or, 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 or it, it comes from a tree? Some of the trees that are in Jerusalem right now are over 2,000 years old. And they're still producing olives. Uh, oops, there goes that olive tree branch. There goes that olive tree. And that same olive tree produces olive oil. Now, how in the world does that olive tree get oil from out of it, from out of its fruit? Well, the harvesters actually go up and they, and they take the branch and then they take a stick and they start beating it. Beating. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, laid down but not destroyed. It's the pressing, press, press into your presence. It's a pressing for the oil. And then when you're pressed and things flow forward, sometimes you can't preach or teach or do anything in the house of the Lord until you have been put up under intense pressure. I had one of my friends said that the pressure will either bust, bust pipes or make diamonds. Please do not think that when you get into ministry that it's going to be scot-free. La, la, la. La, la, la. No. My motto is, come suffer with me. Come suffer with me. You can't anoint just anybody. You can't lay hands on just anybody. So the anointing oil is for order and is for sanctification. Sanctification means to set apart from. You can come on in. 
sanctification, the set apart from. The oil, the anointing oil, also can be contaminated due to hidden sin. How in the world is that? You can be anointed and you can have issues. You can be anointed and the anointing not work for you. What, well, let me give you some Bible with this. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 says, Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly uh, a hymn that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. When you talk about the ointment, it's talking about the oil. In other words, God is saying sometimes when we have anointing in our lives, one fly can drop into the mist of your spirit. Flies are symbolized as demonic spirits. Or Beelzebub, do you know that Beelzebub is, is another name for Satan, B-L or Baal Bazel. Beelzebub is another word for Satan or Lucifer, which means Lord of the Flies. You ever seen that creepy movie back in the day? Lord of the Flies and the kids were going all crazy and they had that head of that pig and all the other stuff. It seems like they were driven by something. A spirit. These same flies, when they get into the midst of the oil, it messes up everything. Just one. So if you're anointed, you can have one demonic spirit hidden deep on the inside of it, and then all of it smells bad. So the key is, how do you get it out? You have to, you have to watch this. You, you, some of the ladies that cook, you have to put it in a strainer. You have to strain it out. In other words, you have to get rid of the inconsistencies. In other words, you have to do two things. You have to heat it up, set it on fire, because when you set things on fire and when you put the heat on specific things, then all the impurities rise to the top. And then once they rise to the top, then you pour it in a strainer to get out all of those little bits that come up to the top. A strain. It's a strain. To reveal hidden sin. It's not easy to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you don't have it all together. The anointing oil is for order. It could be contaminated due to hidden sin. But the anointing oil is also for unity. Lady Martin read it this morning. I didn't even know she was going to say this particular scripture. Psalms 133 verses 1 through 3 says, the song of a sense of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head running down upon the beard, even the beard of Aaron running down the edge or the skirt or the hem of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. Now let me tell you a little bit about this scripture. A lot of people use this particular scripture to talk about unity and family and friends day. But I want you to recognize and realize verse 2 where it talks about the edge of its garments. First of all, when God anoints you, he anoints you from your head and then it goes down your beard. Everybody wonder, well, why am I growing this long beard? I promise you, it's, it's, just for, it's not just for a fashion statement. There's a, a reason behind it. And I, I'll share that with you if you want to know. But, but when, when the anointing goes upon the head, it goes down the beard. Even Aaron's beard. Aaron was a priest. And then it went down to the skirt of his garments. When there is a skirt, there's usually a hem. A hem means that there's a, like a cup down at the bottom of your pants or a cuff. And when that anointing oil goes down inside of that cuff, then it begins to pool up and it begins to, begin, begins to build a reserve. So when the woman had the issue of blood and pressed towards Jesus, and she said, if I must only could just touch the hem of his garment, she wanted to go where the anointing was. Ah, you're missing it, people of God. See, why are you trying to uh, reach up to the sky, reach up to the top, go to the next level? The anointing is down at the feet of Jesus. And in order for you get to, to get to the anointing, you have to bow down. Uh, if you have pride, you won't bow down. If, if, you, you are, uh, if you have pride, you will not submit to the will of God. It is hard to bow down. But that is where the anointing lies. The Bible says that if you want to be the leader of all, you have, to must, you, you have to be the servant of all. If you don't want to serve anybody, you're not ready for ministry.
If you don't want to serve anybody, if you don't want to die to yourself, you're not ready for ministry at all. Anointing oil is for unity, to be one with Christ, to be one with his people. Oh, to, to, to experience the moment of having your head anointed with oil. The oil is also people of God for healing and deliverance. James chapter 5, verse 13 through 16 says this, and it goes as follows. Verse, verse 13 says, is anyone among you suffering? I can look in your eyes this morning and tell that you are. Notice what the answer is. Let him pray. Let her pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let them sing psalms or songs. Uh, is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The Lord will not a person. The Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Oh, my God. Goodness. Now the verse goes on, the part that we like so much. The effect of the fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Well, how can you have a fervent and righteous prayer unless you confess your sins to somebody? If nobody ever knows what's wrong with you, then you're holding it all. You still have oil on the inside of your olive skin. It has not been pressed yet, but God has a funny way an old preacher told me a long time ago that God has a funny way of breaking those hard folk. King Nebuchadnezzar, you could say he had the most pride that you could ever even imagine inside of the Old Testament. But God says, do you know who I am? I make the lame walk. I make the mute speak. I, 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 I open up deaf ears. And he bit down Nebuchadnezzar so low until he was found as a madman inside of the fields eating grass like an animal. And then after he went through all of that, then he rose up his eyes and then he says, I now realize that God is truly God. You have to confess your trespasses to one another. Some of us have too many secrets. We have flies in our oil. You get the fly out when you confess, when you reveal, when you are transparent to one another. I reveal myself to specific people just so they'll know that I'm not perfect, but I still need to be held accountable for those flaws that are in my life. That's why I surround myself with strong men in my life. The oil is also for overcoming your enemies and breaking strongholds. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 24 through 27 in New King James Version says, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not be afraid of the Assyrian. He shall strike you with a rod and lift up his staff against you in the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation will cease and my anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will stir up a scourge for him like the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And his rod was on the sea. So he will lift up or lift it up in the manner of Egypt. It shall come to pass in that day. Here it is. It's talking about Jesus here. That his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. It is the anointing. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. You ever wonder? And I talk about this sometimes, but, but there's some folk even right now that go to two churches because they're trying to figure out which one is the best. You don't need to try to find out which one has the best or, or the best production or all those external things. You need to find out which church is anointed. Because if it's not anointed, no deliverance will come for you. You'll be there for years and years and years and still have the same stuff on the inside of you. Oh, those flies. Shoe fly don't bother me. Shoe fly don't bother me. Shoe fly. The, the same fly will be on the inside of you, stinking up everything else around you. It's for healing and deliverance. It's for overcoming your enemies and breaking strongholds. The anointing is there to break the yoke. Jesus says that my, uh, take, up, take, your yoke, uh, take your yoke upon me. Or put your yoke upon me and learn of me. 
My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Put your burden or cast your cares upon him. Here's the problem. Some of us have a Messiah complex where we can fix ourselves. I don't need no help. I just need to pray to God for myself only. But you can't heal yourself. How many of you have ever did open heart surgery on yourself? Anybody? Anybody? Number one, if you did, you die. As soon as you put in the incision, you'll start hollering, ah! As soon as you saw the blood, you will faint. If you're really a soldier, you start going deeper and deeper. You start feeling the pain, and you can't even see you doing surgery on yourself. Say, for example, you start putting yourself in the mirror, and now you're starting to cut out. And since the pain would be too great, that's why you can't heal yourself. The great physician has to reach into those places of your heart in order to pull out what ails you. The oil is for overcoming your enemies and breaking strong. What do you mean by enemies, Pastor Martin? Well, if you notice inside of the scripture, it talks about the Assyrian. Now, let me go ahead and address this right now. This ISIS or ISIL group that's going on in Iraq right now, in Australia right now, it is said that this group or this terrorist group is right on the border of Mexico right now, stirring up trouble, trying to spread Sharia law, the great scourge. Ishmael, Isaac's brother, is beating the drums of war, jihad, right now. It is said that the Assyrians were, were, were so treacherous and were so dangerous that back in the day they would cut off the head of those that were in Jerusalem or the children of Israel when they would come to their camp. They would destroy them. They would cut off their head and put their head on the stick and put tar on it and make it as torches as they would go through the cities and hook their dead bodies behind them and go around intimidating folk. Those same Assyrians are the same ones that are part of the group of ISIS, which is a terrorist group from Syria. How did you say that, preacher? Why is it so necessary for you to know to know that? Well, people of God, whether you know it or not, the enemy is coming. Judgment is coming. Jihad is coming. The war of Armageddon is coming. God is already allowing for the stage to be set, and we have to be ready. How are you going to overcome that? My bombs? No, you can't kill people that ain't afraid to die. Can't, hold on. You can't kill somebody that's not afraid to die. My old preacher told me a long time ago that you can't hurt a dead man. If you are in your feelings, where your emotions on your sleeve, then you're still alive. You're not dead yet. Uh, all this for overcoming your enemies and breaking strongholds. The oil People of God, even with all of that, it's not for everybody. I don't anoint everybody. I don't lay hands on everybody. I lay my hands on the sick. I lay my hands on those that I release. Even in this ministry, I don't lay hands on just anybody. In four years, I've laid hands on one person. Is no one qualified? Sure. But I look at suffering. I look at many different things. I look at things how God sees them. I don't look at the person that looks like they have it all together. I always look at the least of these. The oil is not for everybody. Why do you say that, preacher? What's, what's the reason for that? Well, well, for gifts are freely given, but the anointing or the oil of God is for, for God's chosen. This is how you can have a talented person that could do all different types of things. They could sing, dance, write plays, and all this other different type of stuff. They could preach and they could teach and all this other stuff like that, but then no one gets delivered. They're just saying words. They're having a speech. They're performing. They're ministry. Give me a case in point. Some of you all that uh, watch uh, certain types of TV shows, whether it's... Um, Gospel, gospel shows or, or Sunday's best. And you hear the difference between the anointing and the performer. The performer sounds great, but nobody's being delivered. 
this young man, uh, uh, Mr. Golden, he, 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 Jeffrey Golden, he, he, he began to sing. You came that I might leave. He began to sing and sing, and then people started crying or everything, and he began to prophesy. He began to speak in tongues, and they began to shift the atmosphere. Whereas somebody else, when they get up there, everybody's like this. That boy good. He good. He can sing. But no anointing. The other thing that you need to realize, people of God, is that the anointing is not permanent. It comes and it goes. When you die to yourself, it is revealed. When you are full of yourself, it stays dormant. God uses empty and broken vessels for his work. He does not use vessels that are full of themselves in order for the work to go forth. If you are full of yourself, then God has no room to pour himself on the inside of you. Oil is not for everybody. Gifts are, are freely given, but the anointing oil is for God's chosen. Oftentimes, people of God, when you are highly talented, you have to be the extremely humble. You have to submit, or else you'll be filled with rage and pride saying, I don't need to do that. I'm like God. I could be exalted, and I can exalt myself above God. I can look at how I lead all these angels in worship. Look at how I, I, I move the crowd. Old school version right there. I, I can move the crowd. I'm leading all the creation to worship God. You know what? I could do this for myself. Y'all don't need to worship God. Worship me. <laughs> and he went down like lightning. When you're full of yourself and full of pride, you come down hard. But unlike Satan, you can get back up again. But the only way that you'll get up is that you'll need help because you'll be broken. Anointing is not for everybody. The oil is not for everybody. Gifts are freely given, but the anointing oil is for God's chosen. Well, 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 well like to hear it, here it go. Here's a scripture that, that points this out even clearly. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16, 6 through 7, uh, verse 13 says this. So it was. When they came, that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature. Talk about Samuel right here, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God knows my heart. Maybe that's where y'all got that from. And sometimes when God looks at your heart, he won't anoint you. If your heart is full of things that are unlike God, he won't anoint you. Notice what it says in verse 8. Verse 8 says, so Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, the prophet. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Next. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Next. Then Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel because Samuel was sent by God to choose the anointed one that will deliver Israel. Saul was in place and he had a false anointing. A false anointing, if I were to give you a particular cartoon that gives you the, tr the difference between a true anointing and a false anointing, Simba and Scar. Scar was the old, both of them are lions, but one of them was Scar. One of them was, had unhealed hurt, and one of them had a lot of pain. He looked just like a lion, but he was treacherous. Well, there was Simba on the other hand, and Simba, he was a majestic lion, but, but he didn't want to be king. He was still looking for his father. He didn't accept the call. Most of the time when you are anointed, you do not want to be in front. You have to be pulled up there. Verse 11 says, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all these young men here? <laughs> Is there somebody else? Because God doesn't want none of these folk. God doesn't want none of these preachers, these teachers, these singers. These, he doesn't want any of these folk because their heart is not right. All the young men here? Then he said, there remains yet a youngest. And there he is. Look at this. Look at this. Here, here it is. 
he, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. They were already standing at attention for a man that was getting ready to be anointed and never was even looking for being in the front. So he said and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, talking about David here, with bright eyes and good looking. Ruddy, bright eyes and good looking almost seems like it's a contradiction there. And the Lord had said, arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. A horn of oil basically is a shofar. And what it is is that you take the anointing or the olive oil and you put it inside of the shofar. And then you pour it on the head of the individual that God has called you to call. That God has pointed out to everybody that this is the one. So he sent and brought him in, and he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord had said, Arise, anoint him, for he is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. The prophet kept it moving. Prophets usually don't stand still, they keep moving. They did his job. So now here's David. He was anointed. Now, just imagine this. You out there in the field dealing with sheep. You don't smell good when you're around sheep a long time. I hope you hear the, uh, hear the double entendre in this. Double entendre means uh, a du the dual duality of the meaning. There's a dual meaning. If you want to minister to others, you have to be around the sheep. If you're never around them, then you smell really good. You're just like a, 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 a Clemson football player <laughs> that did not get on the field and their jersey is still clean. They didn't play, but they look like they're part of the team. Okay, but I digress. I just wanted to throw that one out there. Not everybody is anointed. David, unsuspecting, didn't even know what was going on. He smelled like sheep. He smelled like crap. He was always going after the sheep. Always driving the church van. <laughs> always cleaning up the church. <laughs> always taking out the trash. Always going back to the dumpster. Always, always, always down there at that building. Always trying to help somebody. Always sending the inbox. Always giving some money. And he wasn't even noticed until God pulled him forward. Now, the people didn't notice, but God knew all along. So, people of God, if you really want to be anointed and move forward, you have to be around sheep or people. You have to be their servant. If you don't want to serve them, then you're not ready. Okay, I'm just letting you know what. See, people think that I, that I just started ministry in 2010. No, that, that, that's when God said start a church. But God started me in ministry back in 2001. I preached my first sermon in 2001 in Jacksonville, Florida, at my, my former pastor's church. And then from that point on, I served up under another ministry for nine years dealing with crap and sheep and serving and driving. Drove in the man of God around town, giving money, giving alms, doing whatever I needed to do. And I wasn't looking to preach. I just did what I was told. Nine years, nine, number of birthing. And then in the 10th year, there was a great contraction. And God <laughs> spit me forward. It was a lot of serving behind the scenes, a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, a lot of suffering. There's suffering when you are effective. The more you suffer, the more you can relate to other people. The more that I seek him, the more that I find him, the more that I find him, the more that I love him, the more that I love him, the more that I worship, the more that I worship, the more that I surrender. I surrender all to what? If, if you're still standing, you can't surrender if you're still standing in your own ways. The way that you serve is at the feet. The anointing is at the feet. You have to bow your spirit at the feet. And if you bow your spirit, if you submit, then 
God will bring you forth. Then you have the anointing. David wasn't even looking forward to it. He wasn't doing anything. But God chose him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forth. Now let me tell you another little fact about David. Just like I told you this particular fact. That I started ministry over 14 years ago. The other thing that God wanted me to do is that uh, the scripture came alive in saying that before you take care of my church, you have to take care of your own house. So, so God wanted me to be married for 10 years first, faithful to my bride first, before I try to take care of his bride later on. Some of us, we jump out and, and we're not even ready at home first, and then we want to try to take care of somebody else's house. <laughs> it's quiet in here. You can hear roach poop. <laughs> but that's what true anointing is. He wanted me to be married first. He wanted me to serve first. He, he didn't want me to have any accolades. I did not have my name on any flyers. In nine years, I had my name on one flyer. the scenes. David, even though he was anointed to be king of Israel, he wasn't king yet. David, when he was anointed, he was about 17 or 18 years old. And for the next 17 years, he was being developed to really take on the crown. See, you could be anointed and chosen by God, but you can't take the crown until you've been developed. Uh, if everybody's wondering what kind of preacher I am or teacher I am, I'm a developing teacher. I see potential, but, but, but I put people in specific type of situations and circumstances just to see if they can pass the test because I know what lies ahead. Everybody's good the first, second, third year. What about the 14th year? My bishop, he's been in ministry for almost... 30 years, 35. Now you tell me how you can deal with hard-headed, arrogant, <laughs> ungiving, unloving, non-giving people for 35 years. You're anointed. And God will grace you to deal with such things and such suffering. The anointing brings joy despite the circumstances. Now here's the punchline right here. What do you mean by joy? Joy, joy, joy. The anointing brings joy despite the circumstance. Psalms 45, verse 6 through 7 in the NIV verse, it says, it says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Why you look so mean all the time? You ain't never happy. You, you don't never know how to. You, you don't never know. You don't know how to be joyful. Despite the circumstances. Show me that you can smile when you don't have any money in the bank. Show me that you can smile when him or her is not acting right at the house. Show me that you can smile when the preacher sits you down because you're acting all arrogant. Show me that you can smile. Show me that you can serve even though your flesh says, I don't want to. Show me something. Show me what you're working with. Well, I'm living for a nice look. Is that a familiar song or something? I don't know. I never heard of it. Okay, let me stop lying to you. So, so, so the anointing brings joy despite the circumstances. I want y'all to smile a little bit. I have had to learn how to smile through the pain. I've had to learn how to be joyful even when things are not going right. When people don't show up. When people don't give, when people don't serve, I still have to be joyful regardless because how in the world are you going to make it to the 35th or the 40th year unless you can make it through the first few? You can't do it. One of the main reasons why God oftentimes, if you look inside of the Bible, very rarely does he release people when they're at of a young age because they haven't really seen or experienced the world. They haven't suffered enough just yet. Suffering does not mean you're making a whole bunch of mistakes and you're suffering because of consequences. Now, no, I'm talking about when you're doing right and you still suffer. 
You may see Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Those were the, the youngest ones. That one was 17 and the other one was 30, but the rest of them were old. They've seen some things. They've been through some things. They were able to handle some things so they could tell and preach and teach and show to others. Elijah had Elisha. Moses had Jethro. The disciples had Jesus. All of them had this mentorship relationship so that the anointing could pass from the head down to the skirt. In other words, the anointing was passed because they had people that were serving the man or woman of God. When you serve the man or woman of God, then you can stand up. Oh. If you want to stand, someday you have to bow and serve today. People used to look at me with crazy when even in my, my, my former church where I used to tie the man's shoes and drive the man around and gave a thousand dollar watch to this man. All because I wanted the anointing. And God gave it to me. He changed some things around. He placed some things in my life. And now things have shifted greatly as a result. The anointing, people of God, and here's when Jesus comes into picture. You know when Jesus comes into picture, it just changes everything. When, the, when, when, when you're anointed with oil, it also brings judgment. And it gets you ready. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 through 13, it talks about how Jesus was talking to the Pharisees at the time of the religious folk that were there at that moment in time. Religious people have a very hard time uh, understanding the revelation of God. But Jesus tried to teach them anyways in hopes that they could actually get the word. Verse 1 says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. <laughs> Some people know how to deal with grace <laughs> in a wise manner. In other words, grace makes them wiser and stronger. They, they understand that God didn't kill them, so they do better. Then there are some people who are foolish with grace, and they sin more because God was merciful. Verse 3 says, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. <laughs> but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those verses arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. <laughs> For our lamps are going out. Now hold up. Wait a minute. Let me put some base in this right here. Right here. Have you ever noticed that people who are not anointed always want something from somebody that is? Give me some of your oil so I can preach better. Give me some of your oil so I can dance better. Give me some of your oil so, so that my church can grow. Church growth is not only by numbers, it's by the people. The people have to grow on the inside, then their church will grow on the outside. Give us some of your, give me your flyers, give me your people. <laughs> Let me come to your church and start a church within the church. I can't tell you how many times it has happened here. And Lord knows there have been times when we needed the money. Or oh, Pastor Martin, we'll give you $850 a month. We'll give you $500, $700 a month. I was thinking, man, I could do some things and get a billboard. I could do this, I could do that. But then I've been advising, no, you can't do that. You can't start a church within the church because those same people that want to start a church within your church will try to take the church from you. God never set up a tabernacle inside of a tabernacle. He set up one tabernacle, and he was in the middle of it. I'm giving you gold nuggets. This will be good for later on. Don't worry about trying to go to the conference and paying $999. You could get the same word from out of the same Bible that all of us have. It's the same thing. Verse 6 says, at midnight a cry was heard, behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins uh, uh, arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps, our anointing is gone out. I was serving the Lord, but now I'm burnt out. Are you tired? Are you weary of serving the Lord? Maybe you are not anointed. Maybe your lamp 
It's burned out. Burnout. What is burnout? You know what burnout is? Burnout is when you're tired of working and you fed up and all of your posts say, I want to go on vacation. <laughs> For seven months in a row, I want to go on vacation. <laughs> My wife is like, I want to go on vacation permanently. I'm telling y'all, when we retire, if God wills, once we get done with ministry, we're going to go to an island and not come back. We're just going to give the keys to the Maserati or ministry, whatever it is. We're just going to give over the keys and just say, we'll see you later. Send us an email if you need help. Follow the instruction manual. Where's the instruction manual? It's in the Bible. <laughs> and we're just going to find out, where, 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 how, did y'all, how did you guys get here? We just came over here. We never, we, we never came. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're going to die on the island. The wise said, and, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. We're going through burnout. But the wise answered saying, no, <laughs> lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Oh, my goodness. So you mean that you got folk going out there trying to buy the anointing? Let me buy the anointing. Let me, if I hang around this one particular person to buy all their tapes and CDs, then I can be anointed. But it doesn't happen that way. It happens through suffering. There's no suffering through buying a CD. That's safe. There's no suffering through going to a particular venue. That's safe. Give us some of your oil. For our lamps have gone out, but the wise answer is saying no. Sometimes you have to tell unanointed people no. Lest there should not be some for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, I'm trying to deal with God and God is trying to deal with me. If you, wanna, if you don't want to fill up or allow for God to fill you up, then I don't have anything for you. When Bishop McLaughlin was, was up, uh, uh, when I was in this observation with the man, I, I was scared. I sat with him for a year. People don't even understand this. I was going, I, I came from out of a, a, a very serious ministry situation, and I met this man at a Gospel Heritage Conference in the midst of at least a three or four or five thousand people. I met this man. The conference wasn't even at his church. He was at another church walking through the crowd, and he was just looking around like this. And my eyes zoomed in on him in the midst of all those other preachers, because I was looking for a spiritual father. I was like an orphan walking around. I had no father. And I was looking for, and then all of a sudden God said, there he is. And when he walked in, he walked in like he owned the place. I was like, man, this ain't your church, but you're acting like this is your church. Who is that? He sat up in the front. Everybody else had suits. He had on a shirt and some jeans, some nice shoes, and the shirt wasn't even in his pants. He just sat on the front. And now here's the thing, the preachers that were well-dressed, nobody came up to them, but everybody came up to him. And I was like, what manner of person is this? It's Elizabethan language. So I saw him out of the crowd. In other words, I knew that I needed a mentor, but I couldn't just get anybody. The one mentor that I was going to choose, he was like this tall, and he had a golden microphone. And he didn't want to let anybody ch- touch it. He didn't want to let Jonathan Nelson touch it or Jason Nelson touch it. It was crazy, man. He was standing up in the back like, I don't want nobody to do this. Don't touch my microphone. And I was like, well, that won't be him. <laughs> but I saw this man. And then I was like, okay, pretty good guy. And I was like, okay, well, you know, never mind. And then after that, he went away. Then there was a pastor's meeting that was going on a little bit after that, and I saw him again. Bishop Noel Jones, a bunch of big-time preachers, big preachers, million, multi-million dollar preachers were all in there, but not at the first building, in his building, because this man has a mall. Feeding the hunger, clothing the naked, not famous at all, but he has a mall employing people. And the mall does not give money to the church. The church gives money to the mall. And when I came into that building, I was like, wow, this is really nice. But I didn't know it was his church. So I sat down on the very front row, and I was just listening. I had some tears in my eyes because I was still going through a painful time in ministry, uh, what I just went through and all this other stuff. And I heard Bishop Noel Jones teaching and all this other stuff. And I heard what he was saying. I, I got like one good thing from out of what he said. 
I ain't gonna say nothing about it. Let me get a scoop pad of that one because I know this is some of y'all favorite preaching. So, so, so what ended up happening was at the very end of the session, Teresa Harrison, the one who's over the Gospel Harris Conference, said, "Oh, and we would like to thank the angel of this house." And I was looking for somebody else, and then this same man who had the T-shirt out of his pants and the jeans sitting up in the front row, looking around like he owned everything, came up to the front, and he just started smiling. And he said, we'd like to thank the bishop, Bishop Vaughn McLaughlin. Isn't this wonderful? Y'all, he has a mall, y'all. He has a mall. He's employing people. He's doing what the church wanted to do. And then my eyes came open, pop, and I was like, this is my dream. This is my vision. He is at the end of my beginning. You missed it. When you have a mentor, they are already walking in what you're walking to. Already walking in what you're walking to. And I saw him. And then at the end, I was like a little puppy dog. My shirt was tight. Now you see the shirt even right now to this day. My shirt was tight. It was tight. He told me it was tight. I was like, son, don't wear that tight shirt here no more. <laughs> my shirt was tight. I was lost. And all these people are crowding around him. And, and I was trying to get his attention. Everybody's taking pictures of him and all this other stuff. But he was doing it with one one. I was like, OK, well, I, I'm not going to get a chance to come up to him. And then all of a sudden, something on the inside of me said, Bishop, I'm in need of a spiritual father. And then his eyes zoom in on me just like that. It's almost like the room became closed. And he said, son, are you married? And I said, yes, sir. Bring you and your wife. Notice how he asked me if I was married. Bring you and your wife and come with us to the restaurant. We'll give you all dinner and we'll talk over some things. And then the rest is history. Not somebody else's restaurant, his restaurant. And I'm sitting in my vision of the future and his reality right now. The anointing brings judgment and gets you ready. Now here's the thing. With Bishop, and this is why it's so poignant because he's going to be here today. One of the things that he gave me while I was there is that he gave me the bastard test. Can I tell y'all what the bastard test is? The bastard test is when the man or woman of God knows that you have a flaw or knows that you have a wound and they stick a knife in it to see if you're going to holler or not on purpose. Now, I don't know how this man knew that I was a hothead or what have you, but number one, he told me my shirt was too small. So I was kind of looking a little bit crazy. I was like, okay, yeah, it is kind of small, so I'm, I'm good with that, all right. But then, after that, I'm sitting down on the bench, just minding my own business, looking at my phone, and he comes up behind me with his hand, and his hands are like big as this podium, and he whacks me across my back as hard. It was like loud, boo! And I looked at him like, Something was rising up a little bit, but I cooled down a little bit. He was like, okay. He said, how you doing, son? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm like this. Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Because back in the day, I would have hopped on him. But then something on the inside of me was like, oh, I just need to be calm and cool and collected. He was giving me the bastard test. The bastard test is when you test somebody in their weakness to see if they will submit. I give people the bastard test all the time just to see if you're going to do what God has called me to tell you to do. A bastard is somebody that does not have or cannot be corrected. They're the first ones that said, Ryan, come and sit on the front seat. <laughs> now, if he had the bastard spirit, he would just would have said, sat in that seat behind him, he would have said, what for? What I got to move for? I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm good right where I'm at. But a true son will listen to the father and they will move. Because they know that in the future, that same father will give that same son a blessing in the future. My spiritual father has been opening up doors. People, y'all don't understand. Our ministry has no, you would say our ministry has no business having our announcements playing in their church. Our announcements play in their church. Their church has 5,000 people. 
and my face is up there talking about some social media. Come at the booth at the end of service for social media. I'm not even there. And I'm in his promo for a covenant fellowship. That same picture with me in that tight shirt. <laughs> and I was like, why y'all had to choose that picture? And he has his hand around. His shirt is fitted. My shirt is all tight and stuff like that. And I have his hand around. That was our first meeting together that same day. Four years later of testing, four years worth of ignoring, four years worth of not responding to any texts, four years worth of being slapped in the back, being yelled at, you got to drive here. I'm, here's the thing. When somebody has the anointing, you'll do whatever it takes in order to be in their presence. If I could just press to touch the hem of their garment. People of God, uh, during December when I was having vertigo and almost drive, I, was, I'm, I'm, I couldn't even drive. But the bishop said, Pastor Andre, I need you here. We need to plan for some stuff. I need you to help me build a room in our church. I was like, what in the world do you need me for? But I submitted, and I got on A1A, because I was too scared to drive on I-4 for crashing. I got on A1A. Now, if anybody has ever driven A1A from here all the way to Jacksonville, it was a four-hour drive. It was really like Gilligan's Island. I was driving 35 miles an hour the entire way because I wanted to be in his presence. I did not want to disappoint him. And I told him about it. He was like, son, you didn't have to do that. But in his mind, he was like, you are really a son. He wanted to know if I had some oil in my lamp that he could put on fire. That's what the anointing is for. The oil is so that it could be set on fire, so that it could be a light to other people. It's not just meant to just stay in its container. It has to be poured out, and it has to be set on fire. It has to be put on, it has to be put on heat. And notice what it says. Verse 10 says, uh, And while they went to buy the bridegroom came, verse 10, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I said to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So God is looking for those that he's anointed, those who have their lamps filled with oil so that he can set them on fire. Now you know what the word or what the song says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. It shines because the anointing has been set on fire by God. That's the truth of the matter. That's the reason for the pain. That's the reason for the anguish. That's the reason for the problems and situations and circumstances that you go through. The anointing, last but not least, and then I'm going to get out of your way because we got some places we got to go this evening. The anointing, watch this people of God, this will help you, sisters and brothers, is for the next level. Yes. Yes. And it cost great. There's a cost to this. There is pain that's associated with this. When people see the sanctuary, they say, this looks beautiful. When I see the sanctuary, I look at a place where people are delivered. I said, I cried a lot in this place. I cried a lot next door. Amen. Over $30,000 of my own money went into this. I tied. The anointing is for the next level, and it costs greatly. Watch this, people of God, and this will open up some things for those of you that are having dreams and visions. I hope they're realizing this verse. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 through 38, and it says this, And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, there was revelation on the inside of a religious system. She brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. In other words, her anointing was sweet, but she was still a sinner. It was a sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> and she, her anointing was sweet, but, but she was still a sinner. And notice this, and stood at his feet. There it is again. At his feet, at his feet. If you want to be anointed, you start at the feet, not at the head. That's why when people ask me, well, Pastor Martin, how did you do what you do in the last four years? Y'all are going so fast. We've been around for forever. And they're asking me to give them information from my head. But I tell them, you need to not start with my head. Start from my feet. Yes. If you want to know how we did what we did, start at my feet. Yes. And that's what Bishop said. He said, if you don't ask me what I know. Start at my feet. 
it's hard to serve somebody like me. Mr. said that he's an alpha male, he's, he's, he's brass, he got food all over the place. I was like, am I looking at a mirror? My hairline is following his too. <laughs> Everything. I, I found my spiritual DNA father. And in the relationship between Elijah and Elisha for eight years, he didn't say anything. All those miracles, signs, and wonders. Elijah, when he was following, Elisha, Elijah, Elisha said, okay, I see this man of God passing by. And this man of God was just passing by. And then Elisha saw the man of God, and Elijah was plowing in his fields with his own oxen. He had his own burdens he was dealing with. And he was plowing his fields, just working for the Lord. And then he saw the man in the distance and said, I want to follow you. And he says, well, it's hard to follow somebody like me. It's hard to be a son. I'm going to be rough on you. I'm going to be tough on you. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your sins. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to call you out. I'm not going to take any pulls or any punches with you because if you're great, like I know that you are great, then I'm going to pull this from the inside of you. If you want what I have, you have to go through what I went through. Lady Martin had a cyst in her brain. Lady Narlene had a tumor the size of a grapefruit in the middle of her brain back in 2012. They went through pain. We went through pain. Verse 38 says, and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears. Jesus' feet. And wiped it with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the, the fragrant oil. The fragrant oil that she had. In other words, it cost so much. And back in that time, she was a poor woman. And she gave all that she had her last die through serving Jesus Christ. How many of you are willing to serve Jesus Christ? Something that will cost you. If you got a big paycheck, that's not costing you. The true cost is your changing. That part that you want to stay the same with, that's the cost. <laughs> what God wants from you is what you don't want to give away right now. What God wants from you, your alabaster box, your anointing oil, the thing that God wants to break open out of you is the thing that you do not want to give up. That part of you, the part of your personality, the way that you do things, that that you don't want to give up is exactly what God requires of you. Amen. To be at his feet. To die to yourself. This woman showed an element of being broken. This woman showed an element of being humble. This woman knew that she was a sinner, but she still had the sweetness of God upon her. This woman gave everything that she had because she wanted what God had for her. She didn't start with the head. She didn't ask Jesus all these facts and figures of how are you going to do this? And how are you going to do this? How am I going to do this, God? How am I going to do that, God? What should I do here? Should I go to this church? Can I go to that church? Can I go to both churches? Number one, you can't go to two churches because you can't have two daddies. Nobody in here has two daddies. Preach. You can't have two daddies. You can only have one father. She kissed his feet. All of that takes humility. So you know the number one ingredient that I look for? Humility. If I ask you to do something, do it. If you don't want to do it, then you're not ready. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. If you want God to move greatly in your life, you have to say yes a lot. You have to put down some things. You have to die to yourself with some things. I want to be anointed. I want the anointing to flow through me, and I want the anointing to flow through each and every one of you in this place. Some of you have great anointings to be an evangelist, a prophet, a teacher, a pastor, whatever it is. Some of you all have great anointings, but it still has flies in it. And those flies have to be pulled out through strain, through heat, through pressure, through the bastard test. The bastard does not want a father. A son or daughter wants a father. See, the one or the other. There is no in between. If you want to go far in life, find somebody that's an expert of what you're doing and then submit yourself to it. Amen. I can't holler because my mouth is dry. So y'all stand to your feet. <laughs>
<laughs> Amen. This is a word. This is a penetrating word. It's a word that could change your life if you want it to. Be careful of wanting to be in front of the, all of the lights. It's hot up here, y'all. I hope y'all know that or not. Y'all think it's the suit. No, it's the lights. The lights are hot because I'm very close to it. That's what it's like when you're the leader. If you want it to. Be careful of wanting to be in front of the all Sister Allison told me the other day when I was preaching, she's like, hey, Pastor Mark, yeah, well, your pants are wrinkled. Can, not, can, can we iron them? See all, my, see all my flaws because I'm up under the lights. So if you are going to be a leader, then your flaws are going to be exposed. Amen. And you got to deal with it. Amen. And that is exactly God's ancient path that he wants each and every one of us to be on, to be exposed to own our mistakes, own who we are, so that we could allow for the anointing to be set on fire. There's one that comes before me that will baptize you with water, but there's one that's coming after me that sandal straps I'm not even worthy to loose. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. Now notice how he says that or, the Holy Spirit and with fire. The Holy Spirit comes when you're empty. The fire comes when your anointing is full. The Holy Spirit comes when you're empty as an empty vessel. But the anointing comes and the fire comes when your anointing has been heated, all the flies have been removed, and then God sets it on fire. And here's the thing about oil. Oil, when it is set on fire, no matter how many storms come, even in the rain, it keeps on burning. Yes. Yes. Through people coming to church or not coming to church, people being a part of your ministry or not a part of your ministry, people being a part of your department or not a part of your department, when you have been anointed by God and when he sets you on fire, ain't nobody going to be able to put that thing out. Nobody. There's just some things that people can do. But then there's some things that you can do because you're anointed. You ever wonder why it's effortless for you to have a group of women or a group of people just flock around you? Because you're anointed. Why people respond to the dance of praise? Because you're anointed. Because of the preaching? Because you're anointed. Because of the singing? Because you're anointed. I'm not anointed to sing. I can sing, but I'm not anointed to sing. My brother, my wife, and some of the others of you, y'all are anointed to sing. People cry when y'all worship. People don't cry when I worship. And I'm okay with that. I'm anointed to preach. That's my area. That's my lane. I ain't going to get no album. I'll be just like Bridget Palmer and I have an album cover and I have her sing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. We worship you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, Lord God, that even in these greater cloud of witnesses, that you have anointed us and you have called us to be greater. We thank you, Lord God, for your kindness, your mercy, and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, at this moment in time, I'm going to do something because God told me to do it. The title of this morning's message was, Now, Where Is That Oil? So we're going to have a quick ordination this morning of a true son. Minister Winsley, come on up here, son. Amen. Where is my oil? I have my oil. Amen. Deacon Penn, I need you to come up here. Of course, his wife, she was already up here. That's fine. Lady Martin, come on up here. On time. Standing in the gap for me when I'm going to Bible study. Teaching. 
stretching himself because he's a man of few words. Follows my post. So if I'm not doing right, he'll know. <laughs> son, I love you. You are a true son. Y'all don't even know how I met this man. Oh, Craigslist. <laughs> That's how funny God is. On Craigslist. I was looking for a praise and worship leader. On Craigslist. And he just happened to say, I worship just like I know how. And I saw, I was moved with compassion when I read that. I was like, let me get him over here. <laughs> and then the rest is history. So for close to a year, him and his wife have been serving. But you, young man, he came to me like Nicodemus by night. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, Pastor Martin, I, I, want, I, I know that I've been called to ministry and I, I want to do this thing. And for the last several months, six months or so plus, he's been coming to the office and being trained. I was pouring myself into him. Orthodoxy, orthopraxy, ontological, all these different types of concepts, ideas, situations, and circumstances. And then the last test was when we moved that desk in this building. And I said, Al, that desk is like people or like sheep. You got to push it. You got to lift it up. You got to cover it. You got to push it across obstacles. You got to open doors for it. Sometimes it'll press you. Sometimes it'll hurt you. But eventually, if you put it in position, they'll be ready to serve. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, listen. right now, if y'all lay your hands on them. See, we, I'm not going to just lay hands on them. No. The oil has to be poured upon his head as they did in the Bible days. I feel this thing all over my head. Good Lord. He is truly a son. The first minister of Divine True Christian Center four years, so you know that I don't, I don't take this lightly. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, right now, I come to you in the name of Jesus to anoint this young man for the work of the ministry to come serve by my side in the service of his sheep for him to come suffer with me in the name of Jesus. So I anoint his head right now, Heavenly Father, right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus as being an official minister of Divine Truth Christian Center, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we release you, son, Right now, in the name of Jesus, we release you, Lord God. We release him right now, in the name of Jesus. And we endorse him fully in front of all these clouds of witnesses, Heavenly Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, to be able to preach, to be able to teach, to be able to move into his calling, beyond the keyboard, beyond singing, Lord God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Son, come suffer with me. Come suffer with me. And you will reign with him. In Jesus' name, amen. God loves you. Amen. Turn around, son, so that people can see you. I present to some and to others, minister, a preacher of the gospel, Al Winsley III. We thank you, Lord God, and we worship you. Let me give you the certificate. Hallelujah. Give me that. On this joyous occasion, God told me to do it today. Hallelujah. Congratulations, son. You have earned it. And this is only the beginning. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall receive your certificate in the mail. <laughs> God bless you. Now get back on that keyboard. We got work to do. <laughs> amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. The first of many. You got to come right. You got to come right. You got to come right. All right. Let me go ahead and get on out of here. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. I'm just elated. What in the world? All right. Y'all ready to give? This is a giving atmosphere. Hallelujah. Come on, let's go ahead and get into the word of God.
Amen. Amen. Go ahead and get your gifts ready to, and working together for this. Let me bless this offering before we start giving. Lord, the God, we thank you for these that are your people, Heavenly Father, as they give. Heavenly Father, bless them some 30, some 60, even some 100 fold. We thank you, Lord God, and we worship you. We thank you, Lord God, for this atmosphere of miracles, for this atmosphere or this day of, of ordainment, Heavenly Father, on this day of fall, the time when the season is changing. We thank you, Lord God, for the embankment and the changing of the season, Lord God. Change our finances, Lord God. Change what we're going through. Change our situations, Heavenly Father. Let us have the anointing of a seed and let it be planted in this good ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed, people of God. a few more minutes. If you don't have cash or a check, they are giving um, via debit or credit card in the back. Uh, so if you would like to give that way, that way is possible as well. few more things to do and we're going to get out of your way.
Amen. Come on and put your hands together. We just thank God for those that gave and those that didn't have to give. Continue to pray for us as we continue to reach others, which is keep through kingdom giving and through kingdom living. And as we continue to serve others, just pray for us that we do what God has for us to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your gifts. We are going to, are the children ready? Okay, they are bringing the children over. So um, in the, while they're bringing the children over, I just want our first time guests or our newcomers, if you will please stand at this time. If this is your first time visiting here, please stand. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, it's okay. We're not going to ask you to give your name and what's the name of your pastor, where you come from, and all that stuff. We don't do that here. But we want to officially welcome you to Divine Truth Christian Center. We are so grateful to have you here. You could have been at any of the wonderful ministries here in Orlando, Florida, but you chose to worship with us this morning. And for that, we are grateful. And we are honored to have you here. Thank you for standing, and thank you so much for coming. Come on, let's give our newcomers another hand. Amen. Somebody please go get the babies because I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> Amen. Here they well, come. Well, I do. Preachers always have stuff to say, but yes. no, I'm good. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> once again, to all of our visitors and guests, we'd like to once again welcome you to Divine Truth Christian Center where God wants your dreams and visions realized. Oh, Lord. I, you already know. Look at the God bless the little children all around the world. Yeah, yeah the black and white and all precious in the sight. God bless the little children. The world. Anyway. <clears throat> Amen. So today is Celebration Sunday. And as you know, this is my favorite Sunday because this is a time where we can celebrate you. If you have a birthday or a special occasion this month, we can celebrate you. And so first we're going to celebrate our September birthdays. Are we ready? Deacon Penn, are we ready? Oh. Click on that mute button, see if that mute button is on there on the screen. Yes. Amen. Divine True Christian Center celebrates first birthday. Yeah. First birthday. We got to move on. On the third, we have Brother Phoenix Crawford. And we, yeah. Amen. And we also have on the third, Brother Daniel Crawford. They are twins. And they're not able to make it this morning, but we will definitely make sure that they receive their gift on Thursday. Amen. I need my music. I'm sorry, y'all. But this is not working for me. that again. I know under pressure. That's not it. We'll move on. So we're going to celebrate our birthdays. I know Al can't play the song right on the keyboard. But anyway, it's ice cream and cake and cake. So we have Daniel Crawford. We have Phoenix Crawford. The next one is Vincent Rivera. Where's Sister Allison at? Come on, get your cupcake. All right, baby. Thank you so much for that. God bless you. God bless you. Next up, we're going to have Keith Hardrick. Come on, Melt Boss, man. He's one of the other Mike Tyson fans in the house. I'm still working on this other guy. I'm trying to work with him, man. Oh, my goodness. I showed him the tape. He was like, oh, he ain't moved by that. Oh, he got it now. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Now we can turn up. All right. Now, see, normally you have to do your dance to get your cupcake. <laughs> you said he already he got, got it. <laughs> he was like, I got it. Then we have on the 19th, Sister Jamelia Williams. All right. Now, you're a dancer, so I know you can do a dance. All right. <laughs> and then we have on the 25th. Brother Rick Reed. And then, of course, on the 24th, my baby, 
my first. Come on up, Andre Martin III. Where your shoes at? Go, go, I don't know go, where he gets go, that dancing go, from. Go, 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 go. All right. Alton, I don't know where he get that dancing from. <laughs> Can I tell y'all a quick little story? Oh, no, no. We're not done. Because a little birdie told me that today was Mr. Robert Jackson's birthday. Where you at, Papa? Come on up, Come man on of God. Up. Come on up. <laughs> you tried to hide. We got you. <laughs> you got security detail. That's security detail. All right. God bless you, man. Happy birthday to you. He ain't gonna dance. Y'all know that. Y'all try that. You, you try me then. Can I say that? <laughs> God bless you, man. All right. <laughs> and then we have one more. Our special guest, Brother Thomas. His birthday is on the 27th. Come on up. See, you didn't expect that your first time here. All right, Amen. Mr. Thomas. <laughs> God bless you, man. God bless you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. God Come bless you, man. Your hand. Oh, we have another one? Oh man, come on up here. You 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 flogging for real. When is it? The 27th? We have another 27th. It's Brother my man Antonio. Tony here. <laughs> Tony Hernan and I. That's my man right there. See, y'all can't hide from us. See, me and, me, and me and Tony, we be arguing in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the van about sports and the heat and everything. Man, please. I'm, I'm going to still work with it. We just need to watch a marathon of Mike Tyson fight so I can just convince you otherwise. Oh, boy. Versus Evander Holyfield, he has skinny legs, man. He did. He has. Okay, I'm sorry. Do we have any more September birthdays? Hey, Amen. Come on, put your hands together again for all, all right. of our September babies. Hey, Amen. And last but not least, and we're going to let you get out of here, uh, we want to honor our new members. These are members that have gone through the membership, new membership orientation course, and they are complete members of Divine Truth Christian Center. So if you have the new members, it already has a song attached. And it's not ice cream and cake. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and what we want to do is we want to have, when we call your name, if you can come up, and we're going to take a picture with you, and we want all the family to come and greet our new members at the end. Amen. Keith and Iris Hardrick, come, come on, on down. Up. Pamela McGill, come on down. You're from Lachelle McGill. Johnny Winsley, come on down. The third. Alicia Winsley, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Amen. With the right one? Okay. Amen. Now, these people of God, they are, have been serving already so faithfully, and we want to make sure that we truly honor them um, as becoming full members and serving in the kingdom. So I want you once again to stand to your feet, and I want you to put your hands together for the new members of Divine Truth Christian Center. Woo! Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God Hallelujah. bless you. Now I want our family to come on up and greet them and consider yourselves dismissed. Amen. Come on, give them the right Be hug of fellowship. Of God. <laughs> God bless you.